following podcast has been recorded by LIM. From taverns across Chicago land to St. Joe's Park in Joliet to the world of podcasting. They're upholding the good name of Chet Gunderson and letting the old styles flow. They are the lovely intoxicated men. And this is the lovely intoxicated podcast. Buenos noches, reporting in Espanol now. L-I-M, hey, Spanish Heritage Month, ladies and gentlemen. What do you hear? What do you say? It's Tony Gabagool, joined by some of my favorite friends. Let's start with the guy over here to my left or my right, depending on where you're tuning in from. BX, how are you? Hello, hello, Tony Gabagool, the undisputed L-I-M beer drinking champion. And by the way, folks, after you're done watching the show, you want to see how Tony Gabagool became the LIM beer drinking champion? Go back to our YouTube channel where you may be watching this and check out our lovely intoxicated movie. We will actually next week have a special on our Facebook page where we'll be showing you some exclusive behind the scenes pictures from the set. So you're not going to want to miss that on the LIM Facebook page, but Check out the movie if you haven't seen it yet. I've I heard it's pretty wait. good. Yeah, I heard there's some action shots of the Campfire Girls in action. So, you know. You, oh, know. you know. You know. We've been looking forward to this. It's some National Geographic level shit. And I, I should we give a shout out to our wonderful photographer? We definitely should. Shout out to Slick Nick, who is working on getting those pictures to me as we speak. Did a hell of a job, buddy. We were happy to have you around to hang out. So, uh, oh, the hanky panky behind camera was phenomenal. Okay. Well, our, our next uh, co host for this episode, ladies and gentlemen, technically this is his second time on the podcast. The first time he came around, he wasn't necessarily invited. It was a little awkward, but, you know, he was the, uh, he was the star of the show. He was, and we had to bring him back. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest member of the Lovely Intoxicated Men, Mr. Thomas Foolery. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me today. Thomas, I can ask you, too, real quickly. Um, you had your first experience at Rocket Pro Wrestling at Fall Brawl. And it was a lovely first time, I got to say. You know, it was just, things were really popping off. It was... It was good time, good matchups. I enjoyed it, you know. You know, I met that uh, baseball fella. He was pretty, uh, you know, he seemed all right. <laughs> well, well, we still got to learn him a little bit. We still got to learn him a little bit, but it's all right. Let's look for Mr. Baseball Guy, and we got to we'll do that later. We'll all do right. that later. Fuck it, we'll do it live. And joining us, as always, sometimes from the Hoosier State, ladies and gentlemen, he's a fan of corn. He's on the corn hub, Mr. Smiley Mickey. Who's your daddy? That's 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 what I'm saying. That's what Mike um, Adamley would say. Oh wow. Uh, like you're making me crazy, Kofi, but who's your daddy, Smiley? <laughs> Is his I don't really know how to respond to that, but you know, I'm doing all right. Is that Tim? Nice guy. Yeah, that's my uh, yeah. That's Shout out to that. Tim. Very nice. My dad. And Joy. And my mom. Laura. Hi, Laura. Hi, Laura. Hi, Laura. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> how are we all doing? You also had a very, very special moment at Rocket Pro this last show. I did. Those of us who aren't are listening who may not be as familiar, tell us a little about it. What happened? I actually was a surprise entrant in the Rocket Rumble. I don't know what exactly happened. All I know is I was ended up with a bunch of coats on me. Oh, you were like a like the official Rocket Rumble coat rack? I think that's exactly what they called it. No. 
So and it sounds like Damian Saint might have put you in that uh, position. Yeah. 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 I don't know what it is with him and like turning you in a coat rack. I mean, this is the second time we've seen that. Um, I mean, the guy dude, has a fetish for coat racks. All right. I mean, yeah. he. Look, he does. I, I'm not going to Apparently, because it, it, anytime I, it happens, it ha happens to me. I don't want to be on the wrong end of Eric Schultz, so I'm just going to say I ain't got nothing to do about that, man. I ain't got nothing to do about that, man. Nope. I don't got anything about to do about that, man, either. But, you know. Yeah, I don't do that either. Yeah. Or, I mean, yeah. Thomas, what's your take on this whole coat rack situation with Smiley McGee? I, I he yeah, let me tell you out there in the field he had optimal placement. It was, you know, perfect placement. I mean he he had it. At, there's one point or another he had his hands on like every other wrestler during that fucking uh, that, that that match. All right, he was he was into it. You know, so it's phenomenal. It was it was wild and oh man, it's like every every time he interacted with someone, it seems like someone lost a piece of themselves. You know, like. I mean, in a I way, got. they kind of did. Don't lose your head over this, okay? Don't get locked in a closet and bathroom and think you're in the chamber of secrets. You're actually in the chamber pot, okay? Of secrets. <laughs> now, one thing I do need to address, Double J, some people have been inquiring, where is he? Where the fuck is Double J? I got to set the record straight. And PX, you can kind of back me up on this. Uh, I refer to you as my consigliere. And a lot of these decisions, I bounce off of you. But we had to bench this guy. Just because when I thought he was out, you pulled me back in. You pulled me back in like I'm pulling the truck into the driveway. So we had to take Double J and put him on the bench because he's talking crazy. This yeah, guy, just the, the stuff that he was saying was just, it was a lot. There, you know, it's I, I do understand, and now Maximus Orion, we'll get to him later, but he understands what this is all about. But Double J, opportunities will come up again, right? Yeah. We'll sort all that out. So that's the update on Double J. We're thinking of you, pal. And, you know, when things settle down, we'll bring you back in. When you're ready, you're calm, you're adjusted, and we'll go to war with a couple of these for a couple of these. How's that sound? Amen, oh, for brother. the belts, you mean. I get it. The belts, the uh, the sponsor of this episode. Should we, should we plug that yet? That we should. Oh, folks, think about <laughs> it. <laughs> the right. version of the McRib in mushroom form. Yeah. It's just like Vex Home. Be be folks, behind me is the Chet Gunderson brewery style fried Hobie mushrooms. They were a hit last year. BX, how soon did those things go last season? Uh, I mean, I, I will say I don't have the internal numbers from Captain Dave, but what I will say is that people really, really enjoyed them, and they were a hit. But speaking of hit, we're going to be bringing in a our very special guest right now. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tony Gabagool's childhood hero and the number one contender for the Rocket Pro Wrestling Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the real deal. Rion Skills. Hey! hey! Rion! Welcome to the podcast, Mr. Rion Skills. What do you hear? What do you say? He doesn't say too much. He's a man of few words, and he doesn't need to say much because I was driving. I'm sorry. I'm still currently driving. Please continue. I'm sorry, my God. Not at all, friend. Take your time. Be safe out there. He's a good guy. He's a friend of mine. Childhood hero. Rion, you I got the, your pictures coming up here. The morning after presents September 29th at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's called Free Trial, a live podcast experience. Experiment, sorry. I flunked out of geometry. I don't know how to read. And we're going to have, you're going to have special guests such as Vic Capri, a surprise special guest. Stories, laughs, and more. We'll talk about that, but a lot of us are excited. 
and it will be the it'll probably it because we are releasing the show on sunday after you watch this episode make your way out to richton park to check out the return of the morning after and a very special edition of the power hour what a treat what a treat and we will cover right. folks we're going we're to preview of darkness falls and i got my child by the arrow Hey, buddy. I love that movie. We're, we're going to go over all the matches. And, uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about this fucking guy right here. Because he's going to kick this fucking guy's ass, right? We're all counting on you. No pressure. You got this, Rion. No, no pressure at all. No pressure all right. at all. I, I'm you... almost done. I'm almost done driving, so I'll be able to chat with you once I get situated. I'm almost where I need to be. You take your time and drive safe. That's all that matters. The most important thing is 10 and 2. And never eat soggy waffle, right? It's not supposed to be a bubble. Hey, hey that saying? Mm. Excuse, me. By it. Excuse me. You're not supposed to talk unless you... Wait, present. wait. Yeah, Josh, hold on. Smiley, hold on. Remember, we have a rule for you now. And this is something that was instituted by Double J before he went off to do his thing. So I want you to present to the camera that can. Please describe what is in said can. Well, I always am trying to prove to you guys there's more than corn in Indiana. This does not help my cause. And Josh, this is a can of corn. What did Double J ask you to do with said can of corn? Oh, well, apparently I'm supposed to start when I want to speak. I have to hold it up. Okay. Well, here we go. It, it's very similar to a Ryan Matthews timeout, and it's a very great coincidence that we're introducing it the day that Rion Skills is on the Lovely Intoxicated podcast. I like that. That's a really good corn do attitude you know really corn do uh idea you know Double like always it. thinks of the good stuff Thomas Ford. okay i am officially i'm officially done driving i'm officially made it because we're going to need a little input from you sir because the uh i'm glad you made the, it the pre-show match of darkness fall uh, darkness falls that is it's plural a lot of shit's falling um you know we got uh, a couple of guys you're familiar with from the old town of ipw so uh, when you're situated and you're ready just let us know no I, i'm i'm totally fine with with chatting i'm outside right now of uh of the, the chicago knockouts practice so i am i am totally okay i'm just going to check in and let them know that i'm here uh, yeah. and then Go from there. But I, uh, what did you want to know exactly? So so we have a, a tag team match for the IPW Tag Team Championship. It's on the pre-show of Darkness Falls. It's Jay Thunder and my friend Cash Money, Corey McHenry. And uh, they'll be taking on, let's see, uh, Kendall Fry. Fire? Kendall, Kendall Fire. Fire. Kendall Sorry. Fire. Again, I don't Mr. know. Mr. Broadway. Read. Oh, man, an undeniable Nick Diamond. Rian, what's your take on these guys? Because I've seen all of them in action, but what's your take? Uh, as far as the match itself, I am generally looking forward to it. Uh, these four guys, uh, as far as IPW is concerned, uh, have just been amazing as far as what they've been able to do outside of IPW. Uh Corey McHenry uh, has, probably has the least amount of experience, but has uh, taken that and been able to not only have the, the medallion where he can cash in for another uh, championship uh, within IPW parameters, but he's already done it once to where he is the current uh, alternative champion, uh, which I believe is his first title. Uh, the... The program, as they like to announce themselves, uh, Mr. Fry and Mr. Diamond, uh, they have held championships in different spots. But they collectively are the, the IPW tag champions. Uh, and Nick Diamond, who used a medallion to cash in on both for both of the champions that championships that he, he holds, uh, both the junior heavyweight title as well as the tag titles. Um, 
And then you have Jay Thunder, who has who is the only one that has not held a championship in IPW, but he is currently the number one contender for the league championship, which is held by old school cool uh Damian Fry or Damian Gray, I should say. So I'm I'm definitely looking forward to to this match just to see what what it brings out as far as all of them because it's it's been a minute since IPW has been on board with anything, so I'm curious to see how they how they handle this on a on a bigger stage so to speak because if they tear it up here I'm pretty sure they're going to be able to tear it up on IPW. Oh yeah, yeah, and I don't think the Joliet fans, the Rocket Pro Wrestling uh, fans that come in, I don't know if they're ready for these four guys because these guys are like the pillars of IPW. Every time we've gone out there, Jay Thunder, I mean, that guy's like a house of shitty bricks. He can go through at just about anybody, right? You mean and a then- brick house, Gabagool? What was that? You, you said a house of shitty bricks. Don't you mean a shit brick house? Exactly. And then you got a guy like Nick Diamond. He gets in everybody's fucking head. Joliet. Rocket Pro Wrestling, you got something good to look forward to, and that's the pre-match. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. PX, any input you want to give? I know you've seen all these guys in action. I have. Uh, I consider IPW to be my second home as far as pro wrestling promotions. Um, So I am very, very familiar with all of these gentlemen. Um, I mean, the team of Jay Thunder and Corey McHenry, I'm very, very excited to see because there's such a, you got a powerhouse in Jay Thunder and you got a guy who can really, really, really get that crowd behind them in Corey McHenry. But I don't want to necessarily sell Nick Diamond and Kindle Fire short. Now, Nick Diamond, he's held the tag team titles for a year now. He won the titles last September with lovely Miss Larkin. However, obviously due to some commitments that she had had, uh, the board of IPW allowed her and uh, Nick Diamond to pick a new coal holder of the tag team titles with Mr. Broadway, Kindle Fire. For those who Correct. haven't seen Kindle Fire, uh, the man is a showman. The man really really knows how to put on a show. He's very theatrical. His first promo in IPW was a musical number. It's just, it's definitely going to be great to see these guys tear it up at Rocket Pro Wrestling. As far as who I think would come out on top in this match, I mean, I don't really want to count out the program. They always find a way. Thomas Foolery, uh, you're a thespian, is that correct? Uh, yes, I, I do prefer the company of women. That is correct, friend. If you look over at Rion's screen, and you, you, you know, because you're just getting into this, uh, you're just starting to follow independent wrestling. So based on your thoughts, and when you look at the screen, you see Rion's screen, correct? It's got the, uh, all right. It's got the four beautiful gentlemen. Two of them are holding up belts. No, that's who that's who we're referring to in this match. Yes. Yes. Yes, my friend. Who's your pick? <laughs> well, partner, it's your tough one, but I'm a. Uh... Mm. I feel I feel like a. A strength coming from the left side, if I do declare. Uh, I think I think when it comes down to it, one of them two fellers on the left side there are definitely going to make it to the le- you know the last. They're going to be the ones that it comes down to. I'm feeling pretty good about our boy Rion. That's all I'm saying right now. Well, we'll get to wait, him. Wait, uh, wait, what? <laughs> well, he's new. He's new, Rion. He's he's new. <laughs> He's, he's only been what? He's only been the one show, but but he's he's he's, he's, he's doing a good job. He's doing it. He's, no, he's, he's doing he's, he's great. He's great at it. I was just I'm shocked and appalled. That's why I wasn't ready. I, good job. That's all I got. That that's he, he did great. Re That's great. All right. I taught him well. 
We care about two things in this house. Gravy on Sundays and Rion every fucking day. Okay? Damn right. <laughs> so that's yeah. Smiley, what do you got? Well, I've been to one IPW show in my life. And I am familiar with, I think, at least three of these gentlemen. Um, Corey McHenry to be one because he was just at the last show. He was a part of the Rocket Rumble. Jay Thunder and uh, the Karen himself, Nick Diamond. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You're going to get us in trouble. <laughs> he's going to be fucking. Yeah, he's going to ask for our manager. Well, he is kind of a Karen. Anyway. Um, and I'm Kendall Fire, I don't know if I if he was at that show that I was at, so I don't know much about him. But this should be a slugfest, that's for darn sure. Yeah. And if I had to pick a team, it would be Corey McHenry and Jay Thunder with the victory. One day we'll get Corey McHenry on this podcast. We Mark need to get fun. Corey McHenry one, into LI. One day that's you what will. I'm saying. I think like maybe would. in the near future. Maybe in the near future you will. He could help us out with our budget because he's cash money. He knows all about it. But also, he said he's going to go Modelo for Modelo with me, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. Either way, we're going to have a good time. Always a good time with Corey. Love Corey. So that's the pre-show. Pre-show match. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you get there early. This is October 5th, Darkness Falls. I'm going to switch the picture to some of the rest of the card, and we'll get into match one. We'll give you the lowdown, the rundown of what's going on. All right, if you can see everything. Now, some of their heads are cut off. Some of the big cards are cut off. Let me work on the the Holy Spirit and cropping this. Um, While you're working on that, do you mind if I plug our our, uh, sponsor here on the Lovely Intoxicated Podcast? That would be wonderful. Please do. Hey, Thomas Woolery, you like comic books? Well, I do enjoy a good comic book. I have quite the collection that continues to grow. Why do you ask? What if I told you that there is a way for you to save 10% on your order for comics? What? Tell me more. Tell me more. How? If, How can I <laughs> if you go to cartercomics.com, whether they be graded or raw, Carter Comics has got it all. All you have to do is go to their homepage or their eBay account. Put in the discount code, not a promo code. Promo code you can only use once. Discount code you can use as many times as you want. You could save 10% with our discount code, lovely I N. So that means you, Thomas Foolery, can save 10% off on your order. Wow. So you're telling me for these phenomenal comic book services... I can get 10% off. 10%. percent That's double. Using the code. That's lovely. Finally. Lovely I am. I am. There it is. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I am. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So you can go to cartercomics.com, your one stop shop for all comic needs. Wow. How's that for an ad read? It's like I've done it a bunch of times on JFW up until Travis recorded his own version. And right? he, had, he had the the raspy Travis voice, but it's also kind of like ASMR. It's just more. I'm waiting for him to like chew some pickles while he's talking about Carter Comics. You know, he uh, he does a shot or something. So all right, so we. Just got it all. That's my Travis impression. Shut the fuck up, back, man. You're fucking talking too much. This is my fucking show. You think you're shitting too much, PX? Yeah, fictional made up a, a statement that is not intended to mimic an actual uh, person. Was that good for the copyright reasons? We're good. We're good. No, we're copyright. good. We're part of Freak Nut Studios, but I may have a conversation with him on Monday because of this, but it's fine. It's fine. I'll deal with so, it. Just so oh. you guys know, I've officially checked in, so I am. Um, they know that I'm here. 
So I am now fully focused on this now. So well, whatever questions or whatever you want to talk about, I am 100% this here. Def- this one's burning a hole in my pocket. Well, I don't even know what that means, but I thought it was appropriate to say. But down here, this is uh, – before we get to the matches, I want to talk about a segment with Maximus Orion. And, sir, you share a history with Maximus Orion. So last month at the fall brawl – well, that wasn't even – that was this month still. But earlier in the month, we saw him choke slam his partner, the Amazing Turtle, and cost them the match. Do you have any thoughts you want to give on what Maximus might say at Fall Brawl? Darkness I don't. I, I don't. I was going to say because Fall Brawl already happened, but as far as uh, Darkness Falls, I I don't have any thoughts. Uh, I was very clear on the Power Hour when they asked me then. Um, I... As some, coming from experience, sometimes you have to deal with best for not just yourself, but for for everyone, even if people don't like it. So I can't, I can't without knowing what the motives are. I can't really say anything about it. I mean, maybe everyone else can because you know on the out, outside of looking in. But I personally, and this is coming from experience, like and, until some, until he says what he needs to say. And his actions speak the words that he just continues to say. There's nothing that I can present to you that would that would be right. Even if I hit it 100% on the head, there's nothing that I can say that would be right in that aspect. Good point. It's a good point because none of us are in his head, right? Hmm. That would be a scary place to be. I don't know if there's enough room for us, but we can see. We'll move some shit around. Um... I know that this is this is the biggest challenge I've had because there's people calling on me already. I had to set up uh, a phone tree on my phone because I'm taking all these phone calls and everybody's like, Tony, what are you going to do about this? You got a member of the LIM beating up another L of the LIM. And it's like, well, we did it all summer. It's okay. It's what we do in this group. We beat the yeah. shit out of each other. We make a movie. But this is different. There's outrage in the community, such as Travis T. He wants me to do something. So I've conferred with my consigliere. I think it's our agreement, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to let Maximus say what he needs to say at Darkness Falls. We're going to listen. And then from there, we're going to make a decision in the LIM as to what we do here in the LIM. Because he, Maximus is a member of the LIM and... I don't know if he can be here in our social club any longer if he's going to act like that, but we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, and I mean, it's like, I know there's like a lot of people wanting us to go forward and just go in. I mean, clearly, this is an issue that we need to figure out because not only is it a Rock Pro Wrestling issue, it also is an LIM issue with Turtle and Maximith both being members of the LIM. That's a problem when a member of the LIM attacks another member of the LIM. I mean, who would do such a thing? I mean, it's only guys with, you know, guys that do that are guys that uh, have Cupid's Carnage poster on their wall. They got the Christmas Chaos poster on. uh, I wouldn't know anything about. (laughs) I I wouldn't know anything about that. Got a window unit. I think that could be. You could be talking about anybody. Anybody could have something like that. I've how I've I've seen that on Bill Shelley's wall. I've seen Cupid's Carnage. I've seen that there. That it could be Maximus. I mean, I I think you're talking about Matt. You're not. Not me. Not me. It's all right, pal. Hey, we fucking figured it all out. Me, we... So, you know, you know, you know, you know, when you accidentally choke slammed one of your friends in the junior high, how did you guys get past that? <laughs> did I ever choke slam you, Tony Gabagool, when we were in junior high? I don't think so. I've been about two times bigger than you. Yeah, it would have been a bit difficult. I think you would have sandbagged me, to be honest. Been the same would size. it be possible? I'm I'm sorry, gentlemen. Would it be possible to answer this one? Sure. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, in junior high, I uh, I can say I was not so much choke slam, but I did have a wrestling organization back in the day. Hey, boss, how you doing? 
<laughs> uh, I did have a, uh, when I was 12, 13 years old, there was a bunch of guys that we just wrestled just between seventh and eighth grade. Uh, I, I can't say that I took choke slams, but I can definitely say that I took a lot of moves on, on grass and, uh, all I, the only thing I can say is that in that aspect, you just get up and then get ready to catch the bus. <laughs> Go from there. You can't be late to right. that math class. No. No, because no, cool. then you got to go to gym class and then go from there. Like, you just got to deal with it. So, we can't this at least that's how I'm viewing it. Now, here's this thing hey. I really want to address, and I'm going to go off camera for a second. Damien Saint today, as we're recording this on Thursday, um, had posted this really, really weird screenshot of a message he had with Max. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, it's not like All right. that. All right, go ahead, Ben. So it says, so what do you want to talk about with Damien Saint responding? WTF was that. I'll take a win over Turtle Stew, but what game are you playing? Don't bullshit a bullshitter, kid. And I will say it was things were really, really tense at Hollywood Boulevard this past Friday because the moment where Turtle was choke slammed by Maximus Orion, Turtle got up, stared down with Maximus. Shelly had to break it up and get everybody calm in that theater. It was in it was so tense. It was like a fire at the circus. It was intense. You know, when you go camping, camping intense. Yes, ex that kind of intense, too. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Ah, I get it. <laughs> I, I get it. it. It's, uh, it's a problem. It definitely is. And, and Thomas, good. you know, I got to circle you in on this because I guess you've been, because we all know that you and Simp are really, really tight, obviously. He's not here. Titus can be like horses and glue. So what exactly is going on with Simp? How's our buddy Simp doing? Well, he's doing all right. Right now he's uh he's got something something in the works there, you know, so he's off uh What did he? What did he call it? Yeah, but I was talking to you earlier about it. What? What I? What I tell you? There was a name for it. I, he wanted me to be specific, but you know, I'm not no ocean. I don't. I'm not the best at being specific. Specific about it? Yeah. He. Yeah, uh, well, here's the thing. You know, Simp. He he talks in he talks in like uh, cryptic, very cryptic messages, and he said something to the effect of like. Hope is gone protocol or something like that. Or hey fellas, oh. give me a second. I'm gonna go Whoa. grab a beer. What the hell? He's got a protocol. That's what it was. I my my I was trying to jimmy the locks in my brain, get the info out, couldn't remember what it. What is going on with my what, what's your back? What's wrong with your background? You know, this is a problem. This fucking Comcast dial up bullshit. <laughs> Those, that blocky texture better not be Minecraft. Uh, old friends hanging out, smoking cigarettes. Hey, the sock up. All right. <laughs> but so, so the... yeah, you got the protocol. Yeah, thank you. The pro project, oh. product, uh, no hope protocol. So it's, it's in the works. You know, I'm not going to tell you anything what the protocol is. I'm not going to understand that I'm some type of computer whiz understanding the gyrations of his his CPGP XML P whatever it's called the computers here's but, the thing I barely know how to get the TV on the HDMI one I gotta call my nephew over and say hey can you do hey, your wizard what the All right. what happened to mine we need to do it I just had the image of the thing what the fuck happened to mine Ex, I told you to pump Webistics. Hi, okay. I should have. I should have listened to you. That's so weird. And it's the same. Right, is it the same thing as yours? I mean, it looks like the Blue Man Group is fucking pixelated. Oh yeah, da 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 da. da. That's something else, but yeah, same principle. 
Let's get back on track. Let's talk let's about. Talk, like, let's make my, like the trains outside <laughs> my house and get back on track. We got an Outer Limits match, Outer Limits Championship match that's going to go down at Darkness Falls. And ladies and gentlemen, this is his first title defense. The champion, Ryan, the Ryan Matthews, will be taking on the Wicked Side, Brooks Burnham. Okay, and as always, the Ryan Matthews is going to have Jay back the bounce check in his corner. We saw just this past couple, three weeks ago, uh, our buddy, Connor Hopkins, I guess he's, I don't know if he's our buddy. I like i like to think he's my buddy. I'm not your buddy, pal. But anyways, yeah. you know, he was dethroned. He held that championship for what, over a year, PX? If I'm not did. mistaken. Yep. He ran that title. He, he made it prestigious. Now, I know he was caught up in a lot of TDC drama, but the Ryan Matthews, uh oh, are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I got I'm an just Adobe. having a hard time getting my video back. It won't let me get my video back. I got an Adobe Flash Player downloading. Anyways, let's get back on track. We got this. Uh, we got this match coming up. It's the Ryan Matthews' first title defense. He's taking on the Wicked Side Brooks Burner. I'm interested to get your thoughts because this is two different styles of wrestling. I don't even know what you classify Matthews as. I'd say he's like a dirty wrestler. He uses his manager to help intervene in the match. But then you have a high flyer, very aerial assault. Not areolas, that's something else. Aerial assaults coming in the form of Brooks Berna. So, Smiley, I see you're over there. You're touching your little beard. Lift up your corn and tell me who you think is going to win this match. So, yeah, Smiley, go ahead. I'm gonna so, grab um, I have a feeling a uh, wicked side Brooks Berna is going to win because, you know, last Christmas, me and him made up because I was in that awards ceremony, the uh, Novas last year, uh, not this year, but last year. And he was one of my opponents in that. But I gifted him a water bottle last Christmas. And I have a feeling that's who's going to win this match. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, it finally works. Wait, are you talking hey. about awards that look like this? Yes, sir. Yeah, look at that. Rowdy how many how many group. time Nova Award winners are we now? We are six time a uh, six time six time uh, six time six time six time Nova Award winning fan group. Number one, down and starter. Or were won by us this past Nova Awards. Turtle took home two. LIM took home this beautiful trophy for rowdiest fan group of the season for the Make second us. year in a row. And I also won match of the year with Grandpa C Red. Johnny Nye, the Redeemer. <laughs> I bought his t-shirt, if you could believe that. I gotta try that whiskey of his. You got it on you? That sounds delicious. Well, Lord. I'm gonna have to try it. I'm gonna have to talk to him at this uh, next no, show. It's a, it's a pick of his. He got to pick out a pick of whiskey on his podcast, Battling with Bourbon. That's right. Special bourbon. It's the Rebel... And you also have one, i blanking on the name. I did not buy the other one. The other one has a note of cinnamon. I'm not a big cinnamon guy. Um, but if that's your thing, you should try it because Johnny, Johnny and I put his name on it. Are we talking about that match now? Oh, we uh, I still we still have to go through the Brooks Burner versus the Ryan Matthews, but Josh brought up the Nova, so I had to bring up the fact that we are six-time Nova Award winners. All Oops. right. And uh, thank you to the fans who voted for us again. Uh, let's go for that three-peat, boys. Now, as far as my view on the Brooks Verna versus Ryan Matthews match for the Outer Limits Championship, I mean, guys, let's look at the lay of the land here right now. Steve Michaels is the current Rocket Pro champion. Eric Schultz won the Rocket Rumble and is the zero gravity champion. Uh, you have Ryan Matthews now as the new 
Rocket Pro Wrestling Outer Limits champion. Makes you drink for crying out loud. I mean, the only titles that the Undeniable doesn't have right now are the tag titles and the Inner County Championship. Inner what? And I think why Brandy County Championship. Yes, oh, okay. the Inner County Championship. Brandy County Championship. In, and then I immediately started thinking Alabama and sh- I, you don't worry about it. Continue. So I uh-huh. think the Undeniable is on a conquest for gold within Rocket Pro Wrestling. You got a general manager who seems to want to put his guys in very favorable positions (laughs) and keep them in those positions and keep them with those titles. He said positions. We, Ah. I Ah. believe that that means placement. Ryan Matthews will win the, will win this match because. He'll have Jay Beck in his corner. As long as Jay Beck doesn't have to worry about any more kicks, then he I think it'll I think it'll go to Ryan Matthews. That was pretty brutal. That was such a brutal kick. I hope you I know I've had my issues with him. He creamed me, he poured his cream all over me. I hope that he doesn't eat another kick. No, well, it was you a thing that half and half. It was a thing that you get your minds out of the gutter, people. Hey, well, Thomas, what do you think of Bruce Burton versus the Ryan Matthews? What? <laughs> Who do you think I, is gonna win the match for okay, the outer limits? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, before you answer that, I'm just gonna say this just because of the, the nature of or the content that just took place. This is the second consecutive podcast that I've been on where someone has made a semen joke. <laughs> We're all about the and Navy here. I just I don't know if it's just something in the air. I don't know what's going on, but it's, this is the second one that I've been on where that's just been a thing that happened. Uh, so, uh, if it's in the air, I mean, please. Oh, I'm trying to. I, I'm just just uh, just something I've noticed. But go ahead and continue. Thomas Ryan or. Brooks Berna, who do you think will win? And just because I know you're newer, Brooks Berna. You got to talk about the water bottle. Brooks Berna was the one that won. He threw his water bottle all the way up into the ceiling. It was a thing of legend at St. Joe's Park. But also he was the one that faced Steve Michaels for the Rocket Pro Wrestling Championship last month. I see. I see. Uh, Hmm. That's good enough. I'm digging, I'm digging into my to my memoir banks, you know, trying to make sure if I can remember. You know what? Hold on, say the name. Hey, say the name for me again, so I don't mess up the one I was thinking of saying. So you have to... Brooks Berna. And you, oh have... yeah, that's the one. That's the one he wanted. I figured. And the Ryan Matthews. That's good. Good choice. Good choice. Smiley McGee. Uh, you can't talk yet, but hold up your corn, and then maybe. <laughs> yeah, Smiley McGee. What do you got? What do you got? I mean, I already gave my opinion on this match. It was going to be Brooks Burnout, but you know. Unanimous. Now I'm in... going to ask Rion. Now Rion, after the match that Brooks had with Steve Michaels, the undeniable started beating him down as well as TDC. And you came to the rescue. Do you think that Brooks Berna is going to be ready for a second month of the undeniable when they clearly have it out for those damn coyotes? I'm honestly not sure, but I do feel like they'll be better prepared. Uh, especially if Christian Rose is there. Uh, they are the, their strongest when he's around. There's no denying that. Uh, despite what the undeniable may say about themselves, they the one thing I can say about the those damn coyotes is that they are feisty. They are a feisty bunch. And that's just them individually. You put them collectively in one spot and they wreak havoc all over the place. So it's just a matter of who's going to be there. Uh, if the numbers are all there, then I think Bruno has a chance. But if if they're not and they're one down. I don't. I don't know what could happen. 
Thomas, you're a big coyote guy. Is that correct? Hundred percent. You see, the coyotes use what's called pack tactics and are highly, much higher in likelihood to attack when grouped together. See, this is why he's only seen one show and he already knows about TDC. He gets it. He gets it. That's why we inducted him. If you watch Animal Planet, you'll understand wrestling. The two go hand in hand. Now, speaking of Animal Planet, we got more matches to talk about. In the next match, we're going to have a triple threat. You know what a triple threat is, Thomas Flory? It's when three guys get in the ring. And it's a threat of violence. <laughs> it is for the Rocket to the Top top qualifying match. Rocket to the Top qualifying match. Say that one time fast. Rocket to the Top qualifying match. Rocket to the Top qualifying match. Rocket to the Top qualifying match. I said it three times. That's why we have you here. Thank I'm like you. Booker T. I'm like the Booker T of LIM. I just say things multiple times. I gotta go get the papers. Get the papers. PX two times. Now we we have B O W. He's from the Scumbag Army. Now does he also go by? Can we call him Bow or does no. he only go? By no, he's B O W. B -O -W. Okay, he's B O W, and we're 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 convinced he's going to be accompanied by Rat J Flywheel. That's almost an assumption at this point. Or a guaranteed, sorry, a guarantee at this point. Versus the dream breaker, Aaron Stone, one of our favorites. He's a stud. Jimmy Kimmel. Versus Jimmy Kimmel. Well, no, Jimmy Kimmel's not the other opponent. Um, he's kind of got stuff he's this? doing on the West Coast. So Thomas Fuller will like this. Versus Grin, accompanied by the ringmaster. How's that for a triple threat? Ooh. I like that. Big fan. Big fan. I like the energy. Grim, Grim, Grim. I like, I like Grim. When I yeah, saw him. Grim kind of uh, have a similar personality. You're unpredictable. I, 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 I don't know why. He's always got that smile. He seems so happy. Yeah. No. I mean, we're talking about a legend of the local wrestling scene in Grim. We're talking about B.O.W., who has a lot of power to his game. And we have Aaron Stone, who's looking to get back into that RPW title picture after being cost the RPW championship by the Undeniable. Now, that's not the only thing that's going to be something to think about in this match. I mean, with Grin. Grin seems to be playing some mind games with Shogun. Because I don't know if you noticed at the end of that triple threat at Fall Brawl, that wave really kind of threw Shogun off. And after the show, I went and spoke with Shogun, and his mind was just all over the place from that. That was the only thing that he seemed to be thinking about. But it kind of blew up, dude. I'm going to that. This isn't negative feedback, it was out of your control, but I think you, you triggered him almost. Is that the right word to use? I mean, the thing is, in my new role, I am backstage interviewer. I am a journalist. Sure, you got to ask the hard. I have to ask the tough questions. Maybe I could have asked it at a different point. I think you did, but the it right was just point. right after the match, and I felt that the fans needed to hear those that immediate reaction. But the other thing that we need to, you know, consider here is B.O.W. Now, at the last show, Tom Heisman was taken out of the Rocket Rumble by the Freebirds. We had Tristan Hayes disguising himself as a cameraman at ringside. We had Buddy Roberts Jr. They attacked Rat J. Flywheel and Heisman. But it wasn't just there. In the middle of of my red carpet special at Hollywood Boulevard this past Friday, Rat J. Flywheel and Tom Heisman were ambushed by Buddy Roberts Jr. and Tom, or and not Tom Heisman, uh, Buddy Roberts Jr. Tristan and Hayes. Tristan Hayes, resulting yes. in Tom Heisman being put to his <coughs> own table. That was brutal. Now, what I was able to gather was the 
we all know who the Freebirds are in professional wrestling. They're one of the one of the most legendary tag teams in all of professional wrestling. One of the biggest tag teams of the 80s. And from what I was able to gather, Youth Gone Wild took some Freebirds memorabilia from the Freebirds. I could have sworn that Rat J. Flywheel had a couple of WWE Hall of Fame rings around his neck. I'm pretty sure I saw that. And that's what I'm, that's, to me, that's what this whole thing seems to be about. B.O.W. hasn't been around for any of this. But who's to say that Tristan Hayes and Buddy Roberts Jr. won't come into play? Mm -hmm. Especially with Rat J Flywheel being around. That's, that's actually a good observation to make. So that's that, that, that. There's a bunch of X factors in this match. Regardless, the winner of this match is going to have to go on to face Sam Knight, who won his qualifying match against Shaq Jordan, and the winner of another qualifying match, which we're going to talk about in a little bit here. I mean, this can go a lot of different directions. But I'm thinking that Aaron Stone is going to win. I mean, who knows what Sh how Shogun's going to react. If Shogun's going to try to get in the grin side to get him back. Who knows if the Freebirds are going to try to come back and take out Flywheel again. Aaron Stone, I don't think he's got as much to worry about. He doesn't have a lot of things going on where people could potentially take him out of the equation. Where Grin and B.O.W., that could be... That could They're distracted. So I'm going to say Aaron Stone. It's a good choice. I'm going to echo that for basically the same reasons. He doesn't have as many uh, threats outside of this match to walk, look out for. Uh, yeah, I'd have, to, I'd have to go with you. Thomas, you're going with Grin, right? Oh, 100%. Uh, I love the love love the energy. Love the the clear signs of just vast experience. And you know, thinking about it, back when I was a little tyke still wearing diapers, you know, back when I was 14, I uh <laughs> I do remember that. I was there, we were I heard we, I've heard stories. Who wants to go on the trampoline? I do. Okay, let's go. Oh, I do my diaper up there. It sucks for you. Anyway, but uh, no, and uh, I think that was one of the first matches I ever seen at a uh, a local Blitz. wrestling. Blitz, you were there. You were at Blitz. He was with us. He was. Yes. You know, way back in the day, I, I think I uh, knew a guy that was my brother's knew a guy that was trailing around helping him with the setup and stage stuff. Oh, I had no idea you were you went to Blitz too, Thomas. He, Fulery. I'm learning so much about you. That's right. I get a, I get a, I get around a little bit everywhere, but not enough to to know what I'm doing. I just I just wind up places, you know. That that's that is fair. You wound up somehow in my kitchen, looking in my fridge for Malort. That's just kind of what happened. It took like nine point ten seconds to open the door. Who does that? So yeah, obviously it takes a bit. Oh, you counted. Very good. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, now. I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna try to. Uh, it's gonna be like my new my forty yard dash. You know, see if I can get a faster time. I'm like Tom Brady opening up the door. Anyway, Smiley McGee wrestling. <laughs> what do you think? Switch it up. What do we got, Smiley? Uh, I mean, I'm not biased or anything, but um, I kind of have something in common with. One of the competitors, you know, you know, you know, with a smile. But I'm going with Grin on this one in case you guys were I you was, know, not getting my hints. I was really hoping you said Aaron Stone. I'm just that's just me. I was really hoping you were going to talk that Aaron Stone would be the one you had in common. Just just from the hair alone, <laughs> just the hair. But but that's that's fine. I'm that's that's fine. You want to talk about hair? I don't have it. Rian, what's your take on this match? Who do you think will uh, come away with the victory and a chance at the briefcase in November? 
Uh, smart money would say Aaron Stone simply because he's won it before and he's been able to cash it in to win the uh, RPW Heavyweight Championship. Uh, but as far as being a, as far as the betting side, so to speak, I'm uh, going to go with Grin as well simply because uh, Grin doesn't have anything to lose as they have already, the three rings have already have the the tag team championships, and they are pretty good about watching each other's back. Uh, the Scumbag Army, however, seem to be distracted on both fronts. Uh, and unfortunately, they'll cancel each other out if something happens with the Freebirds themselves. I have to be realistic about it. I don't want to say that, but that's how it looks like it's going to, to go about. I just, I just hope that I'm wrong on that. But just based on how things have been playing out, that it'll you'll see more of them than you will less of them in the upcoming months. That's just me. I'm I'm going with Gren on this one. Well, let's see Red here. You say that he's got a. I know he C Red's got a uh, a thing with Gren. Well, I mean, I'll be fine. I'm not afraid of Gren. I'll be okay. Grandpa, Grandpa Red just, is kind of a fear of Grin. Yeah, and and he and he can take that up with Grin himself. That is one hundred percent. I mean, if we need to facilitate the conversation <laughs> as LIM and as his grandsons, I mean, we can certainly, you know, help him out there. So, see, you know what? Listening. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. I'll make- be I got a, I got a friend named Phil who might be a good <laughs> facilitator for that. Oh, he's a doctor, right? He might be. Yeah, I, I heard that's disputed, though. So, t- uh, Tony, what's the uh, I, next match we got on this uh, fantastic, entertaining Rocket Pro Wrestling card? I need you all to put yourself in the mindset of Game of Thrones, Thomas Foolery. I know you can help me with this. When I say what he's the king of, I need you to repeat, just like they do in Game of Thrones. King of the North! King of the North. You remember from like season one of Game of Thrones? Yeah, I, uh, I watched. Anyway, uh, we got King of the North, Gunner Brave, taking on. I'm, I'm, I don't know if this is. <laughs> we'll see what happens. The Water Boy, Shane Boucher. No, He's no, like, no. You're thinking uh, Bobby Boucher. No, no, that's Shane. He was Adam Sandler. Hey, you got to be careful when it comes to Shane Boucher. I've been hearing things about what he's doing in places such as Chicago Style Wrestling, where he's part of the Hate Keepers and is a former tag team champion there. I understand, but... This is a guy that also, like Gunnar Brave, was trained by Merrick Brave and Seth freaking Rollins. So you're telling me these guys know each other's book. I'm they got each other's what book. I know. They've been trained by the same guy. They're okay. So the water boy stepping into the north and he's the king of the north. So we're going to see how that plays out. Theoretically, he's going to be making sure that his debut against one of the biggest stars in rocket pro wrestling He's going to try to make an impact just as he's done all over the Midwest. I would say, though, it is October. Yes. Anytime that Gunner Brave has a match at Rocket Pro Wrestling in October, it's a banger. Not to mention it's Gunner's house. You're making your debut in Gunner's house. The, that's a big task in and of itself, right? That's a huge challenge. Boy, I got to go with Gunner on this one. It's a no-brainer. Smiley? I mean, you may be familiar with you know, Shane as well because he's a regular at AAW. Um, he has a period. Hey, hey, I know. Hold that, hold that corn higher. I want to see you like the Statue of Liberty. There you, you go. That's That's for Bill Shelley. That's good. Who I've heard may watch this episode. Might. You might. So I'm not really all that familiar with is his, his name Shane, right? Shane Boucher. Boucher. Shane Boucher. Boucher. All right. Um, I haven't been to AAW 
recently, so I have I'm not too familiar with them. Um, but I definitely have to go with Gunner just because this is Gunner's house. Thank you for your vote of confidence. In no problem. Yes. No, the Gunner Sim Foundation, we appreciate you. Yeah, what's happening here, bud? Uh, what's your take on this match, sir? Yeah, no, it's definitely gonna be a wrestling match. We're gonna we gotta get him we're we're gonna get this kid smartened up a little more. Let me smarten you up a little bit. Gunner Brave, he's the king of the north. We got this guy coming in. He's made some waves in another company called Chicago Style Wrestling. His name's Shane Boucher. They were both trained by the same professional wrestler. So do you take the guy with the hometown advantage or do you take the guy coming in for the first time in Joliet? But here's the other thing that Thomas Foolery will need to consider here. There is an X factor with this match when it comes to Gunner Brave. Because after costing Gunner a shot at uh, the RPW Championship at Kicks on 66, Shaq Jack Jordan Bull. also cost him an opportunity at the Zero Gravity Championship in wow. the Rocket Rumble last month. I forgot about that. But gunner even the odds there by costing Shaq an opportunity at the rocket to the top ladder match by costing him the match last month with sam knight he curb stomped him onto a chair is that correct so that is correct there was a chair involved in that um now Shaq's gonna probably want some retaliation is he going to come into play in this match? It is a student versus student match where another third party could very well get involved and try to cause some shenanigans for Gunner Bray. I don't like shenanigans. Okay. Okay. All right, well... I'm I'm seeing the developing story arc here, the storyline. Okay, I'm I'm getting an idea of the the Macam inner McNamara's that are happening right now. So, um, yeah. What did you say? <laughs> I popped Justin. Excuse me. Got it. That's, <laughs> a, that's a, what? Anyway, ignoring whatever I just heard. Uh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Gunner on this one. I feel I feel good about it. And we're I gonna think talk it, after this. Yeah, I think <laughs> we're gonna need to. It's gonna ruin it for everybody. Rian, yeah. um, your thoughts on this match? What the fuck? Hey, hey, hey! What's your profanity? Oh, sorry, sorry about that. Sorry about that. I lost the screen, and then it, it was just here again. So sorry about that. Uh, as far as the 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 hate keeper, uh, Gun and Bray or King of North situation, yes. Uh, is Shaq Jordan still floating around? That is true. No, I'm, I'm asking. I'm asking. Is he still floating around? Is he still we, in Rocket we World? Yes. We can only assume. Mm -hmm. uh, until I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, until that is taken care of, I'm not sure if Gunner is going to be able to focus. Because um, they ultimately went tit for tat as far as victories or losses, I should say, at the last... Uh, Last Rocket Pro show uh, with uh, Shaq uh, losing his opportunity in the uh, the uh, Zero Gravity Rumble because of uh, I'm sorry no I'm sorry Gunner losing his opportunity because of uh, Shaq and uh, Gunner losing his uh, briefcase opportunity because of I'm sorry no. Shaq losing his <laughs> opportunity because of Gunner. Um, so that they're, they're already going back and forth. It's almost sort of like a weird game of one up for Uh I just, whenever that comes into play, it's very unpredictable. 
whereas uh, Shane has no ties, so he can very easily sneak in and get a victory here. So I'm, I'm going to, unless unless Shaq is nowhere around the building, I'm going to say uh, that the uh, the headkeeper ends up uh, winning the match or taking the match. That's just me. All righty. It's unfortunate. But folks, uh, we'll move on to the, the next match here. Um, I do need to, to apologize uh, that uh, Rion skills, he had a little slip up. He said the words tit for tat. And tit, we all know, is one of the seven words you can't say on television. So watch your fucking language, Rion. You can't say tit. This is a family fucking show. Come on, man. Anyways. Okay. That is that is one hundred percent. I I apologize for that. I will be more than happy to talk to you directly, as opposed to my disciplinary actions. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I understand that, but I am I am more than I am more than happy to talk with you if I need to be dis disciplined. If I have any disciplinary actions that need to take place, you can <laughs> talk to me directly. <laughs> You can talk about tits anytime you want, dude. I will look forward to the tit talk. It's kind of like TED talk, but all we talk about is tits. Tits meet toots. All right. So, match five are these fine gentlemen here. And it's a fatal four way. And I got my volume 87 here with me. And guess who's in this match? Damien Gray. Boo. Yes. Boo. Kevin Cade. Boo. 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 Joseph Von Jaeger, I'm drinking a Marzen. It's Oktoberfest. How you doing, pal? He's the intercounty champion, hailing from Grundy County. Okay, and then we also, we have Johnny. Sir, Sir Johnny, the Redeemer, the rock star of the realm. We're Johnny not worthy. Rock. We're not worthy. Okay, I will give... I know PX has been doing a lot of play-by-play -play here, but I want to throw in my three cents here. Couple you of three, these cents, three guys least. have a lot of history. These fabulous idols and a former fabulous idol and Johnny Knight, they got a lot of history. JBJ is the outsider in this match. So let's all think about that as we make our picks. My pick has to be rock star Johnny Knight because he's the fucking man and we're supposed to go karaoke with him at some point. So. Yes, we are. Bring me the beat, boys, and uh, free my soul, Johnny Nye. Let's get it going, buddy. Well, I got some good news for you there. Later this um, coming couple of days, uh, I will have an interview with Johnny Nye where we actually do at one point discuss karaoke. Stay tuned for that. Beautiful. Now, yeah, actually, here's my question. Now, yes. which is, the one thing that's been made abundantly clear to me is that it just doesn't seem like the idols are on the same page right now. I mean, there were issues with uh, Damien and Joey Roth. There were a lot of issues, a lot of miscommunications. And it wasn't just that match last month at Fall Brawl. There was also some issues that came into play at Spring Break. I mean, I was on the red carpet. I talked to Joey and Roxy. I talked to Damien. I mean, they're all claiming that everything's fine, but it just, it, on the surface, I, I hate to say you know, it, but you know, I, I don't see it. I just, yeah, you know, you know, there's some cracks in the foundation. Is that what you're trying to say? There seems to be cracks in the foundations of the idols right now. And it's just, you know, is Damien going to be more focused on Joey? Is he, you know, how is that going to come into play with Kevin? Um, you know, Damien seems very, very focused on, on Johnny right now. Um, but I just kind of am curious where Joey's going to come into play. Is he going to mess this up for Damien and Kevin? Is Is there going to be a miscommunication? I mean, if I had to make my pick, I got to go with LIM's very own rock star, Johnny Nye. I'll take that. Uh, Thomas Foolery, let me break this down for you in layman's terms. We got uh, Bald Badass. We got David Hasselhoff's nephew. 
We got the rock star of the realm, and we got the Mr. Baseball guy himself. Who are you picking? I mean, you never hassle the Hoff, you know. Oh, That's what he's a JVJ kind of guy. I know you recently took a trip to Germany, so it makes sense. That's right. Head up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. I only got lost seven out of the nine days. Okay. All right. Mr. Smiley McGee. Raise that cord, boy. Fire. Go. Go for I it. Touch the sky. As long as an idol. Wait, wait, no, win. wait, you can't talk yet. I haven't said that you could talk yet. Just raise it up. When when we're ready, we'll call you. Your elbow is at a 45 degree angle. Yeah, that's just, it's really bothering me. Okay, now the corn is out of the frame, Smiley. How are we supposed to know you're raising the corn? Okay, now. All right, do you think we should do it? Okay, fine. Uh, we'll Smiley, go ahead. What do you got? So. As long as an idol does not win this match, I will be happy about that. So, JBJ, Johnny Nye, either one, that's my pick. And this is a Rocket to the Top qualifier. Uh, Rian, how do you yes, think this match will play out? Who's going to be joining <laughs> Sam Knight and the winner of the match that we spoke about earlier in Rocket to the Top? <laughs> Uh, I'm actually going to go with uh, with Jaeger, Ron Jaeger. All right. Uh, he has the most to gain out of all of them. Uh, I do feel that the idols are very shaky right now. Uh, this is coming from someone that has fought the idols from day one in Rock and Pro. Uh, they are not the same group as they were before. Uh, and Jaeger is an he's on a hot streak. I was. That was the beginning of said hot streak. So I, I, I know what I see, and he, he he's going to end up doing very well. All right, very good. Now there actually is another match happening before this. It's uh, the grudge match we've all been waiting for. It is Devin August oh. versus Skylar Reed. How could I pass up such a grudge match? Let me provide the lore. We like to provide the lore here on the lovely Intoxicated Podcast, so allow me, the consigliere, to advise oh, you all on um, what exactly is going on here, buddy boy. So, we have Devin August and Skylar Reed, formerly Kings of the Six. Last April, they split. And Skyler was kicked out of the Undeniable. Now, if you noticed, in the Rocket Rumble, Devin and Skyler, they were very, like, blinders. They were only focused on one another in that match. Anytime any other wrestler tried to eliminate either one of them, the other one would push the other wrestler away. These guys are really, really going at it. Former partners, former friends turned enemies. And this is the first time that they will be going one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, of course, there was the Rock and Rumble. Not to smell like, sound like Smiley talking about going to his first concert since his first concert. But, you know, this is going to be the first one-on-one -on -one encounter between these two men. And it is October. Smiley, <laughs> go for it. I know you got a lot to say about this match. I already said you could talk. Why, are you, why aren't you talking, Smiley? You got to start okay. talking. How, how, how do you expect me to stop talking if you don't start talking? All right, go ahead. Smiley. I don't care. Yeah, go ahead, Smiley. Whenever you're ready, Smiley. Whenever, whenever's good for you. Whenever's convenient. So, yeah, I go ahead, a... Smiley. Go ahead and, and tell us what you think of this match, Smiley. You don't stop talking. I'm gonna shove this corn where the sun don't shine. Okay. Yeah. Here. <laughs> Sorry, too soon there, Gabigal. You can feel the grooves. Go ahead. Anyway, um, I have a feeling a uh, Skyler. I know that we haven't always, you know, us as a group have never really seen eye to eye with Skyler. In yeah, because I'm you know, short. So he's. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um. 
but I have a feeling he's going to uh, knock some sense into Devin August and come out on top with a victory. I'm going to give my pick, and it'll help Thomas Woolery with a little bit of insight on how to go with this grudge match, but here's my thing. I got to give it to Devin August because, like PX said, it's October, and there's a boogeyman that is lurking come October. We've seen this. Show after show in October, there's a boogeyman that lurks around St. Joe's Park. Hey, be nice to Santino. He can't help it. What do you mean? So, Thomas Fulton, I have to ask you this. Do you take the guy, Devin August, right? He's fighting a fair match. Or do you take Skyler Reed, who maybe, because it's October... The boogeyman might be lurking. Well, excuse me. I grew up with two older brothers, so I'm I'm uh, used to being scared of a lot of a lot of stuff like that. So obviously, I'm going to have to go with the uh, hibbity boogity boogity woo. Fair enough. I, say what we're all thinking, man. Your, your insight was inv- uh, invaluable. So I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna side with. Mr. Gobbledygook, go, 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 Mr. Gobble, Gobblegool here, hundred percent. A lot of syllables. That is a lot of syllables. Rion, I try not to listen to me either. How do you think this match is going to play out? No contest. No, no contest. I mean, it is. Yeah, that's a good point, Rion. It is. Uh, this match is is. Fair contest. It's it's uh, under fair rules. I mean, if there's any outside interference, it's a disqualification. Is that where you're leaning towards? Where you're hinting at? That, that could be literally anything. Just based on, on if you're going with lore, uh, I know that for October, there's a lot of weird stuff that takes place. Uh, people that are not on the roster that are involved in a bunch of, of multimedia scenarios like Darth Vader and, and Jason and Santa Claus. And, yeah. or like, it's just, just a bunch of people just randomly show up. I, I'm just going to go with a no contest because that is not including the undeniable. It's just a bunch of stuff that just could just happen. I, I don't see this as a match, as it more so a fight, and they're not going to really care about who does what at that point. So I'm I'm going no contest. I think it's going to be thrown out the window. Good point. It's a good point. I forgot about the uh, undeniable. I was worried about the boogeyman and, you know, things that come from Haddonfield this time of year. I mean, sweet. last time we saw him, I mean, he, there was there was almost a murder in the Shelley's backyard, so. Someone needs to call Dr. Sam Loomis to get this shit under control. That is, that is a. Uh, we're not going to speak his name on this podcast be, because we have a rule. We don't, we don't, when there's a murderer, we don't talk about their name on this podcast, okay? We don't advertise their name. Yeah, we don't, we won't mention OJ Simpson ever on this show. No, can we move on? Because I'm getting kind of freaked out at this point. There Hurry he is. on. Beautiful soul. Wait, he's, on, got... wait, he's on screen. We got to do the thing. Thomas, we're all waiting on you. Wait, you got you to gotta put the ones up. We're acknowledging the great and powerful Rion skills. That we are. And fit. Okay. We have match six is a tag team match for the RPW Tag Team Championships. This is the match before the main event. Main event. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see the Bro Bros. Is this the first time they're at Rocket Pro Wrestling? This is their debut. They're like the Cheech and Chong of wrestling. The is Jay and Silent Bob. Bob. Okay, we'll we'll do that route. Maybe that's more appropriate. The Jay and Silent Bob of Well, either way it works. Either way it works. They're in a uh, 
state of mind because of different substances and it helps them in the ring. They are the bro bros. You got Chad and Tad bro. We're looking forward to seeing them, but I don't think they know what they're in for. They're going up against <laughs> the reigning champions in the three rings. We have Sinister and Machine. And I, I don't even need to say much more past Boy, that. Hold on. Before you, before, I just yes. want to really stress something here. Um, These guys are former IPW tag team champions. Also former IPW trios champions. Hey. They have okay. a lot of experience. We can't sell them okay. short either. I They're can't, going I, okay. up against the legendary group in the three rings. This is true. This I is respect. a very dominant group, and they've been dominant for a lot of years. I but, respect. Yes. But the Bro Bros, I think they're taking things a lot higher. If you I think they're that. so high. The, the, these high times that we're in right now for the bro bros. It might as well just put it in Ridgemont High. That's how high these high times are. Yes. Oh, no, they're like, fast times. <laughs> fast times. <laughs> it, 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 no. <laughs> but the problem is, I think they're coming into this match with the munchies, and they're going to load up on Hobie mushrooms, and they're going to be so carb-loaded. Now, there is protein in mushrooms, I believe. I'm not one to talk about nutrition, but... I believe there's some protein in it, but they're mostly carb loading. Listen, because no, of I know there's protein in it. You want to know how I know? How because you know? I once saw you eat a mushroom, and you like grew really, really tall. Ladies and gentlemen, and when someone hit, you. and then when someone, but you ran into a wall or something, and then like you shrunk back to normal gobble ghoul size. Like, there's got to be something in those mushrooms. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to talk about our next sponsor of the episode, Blue Chew. It will help you grow to enormous sizes and run through walls. Blue Chew can help you. So chew Blue Chew so you can run through those walls. So my pick, be, because of the green stuff, and I think it's going to get in the way of the camp, you know, I don't know, they're going to get the munchies, man. They're going to be too sidetracked with the Hobie mushrooms. The three rings are going to capitalize. I go with the three rings. That means they're going to be hungry for victory, though. They got to We'll okay, have the munchies we got, for victory. We got Thomas's pick in the Bro Bros. Look, you can't yeah. go wrong. It's if it's unpredictable, you never know. I'm throwing my hat in their ring. Yeah, so got. I think um, the Bro Bros have a real, honestly good shot at this. I mean, they are tag team experts. They're going to have to go up against a really, really tough team, but it's very possible that they're going to try to make an impact in their first appearance at Rocket Pro Wrestling. Smiley. Um, never really have seen the Bro Bros in action other than maybe once at IPW. Um, but I uh, think we're gonna have to go with uh, Sinister Machine because I just can't bet against them. Rian, you are the informational liaison at IPW. For any Rocket Pro Wrestling fans who haven't seen the Bro Bros in action, what do you want? What should fans know to expect with the Bro Bros? Do not let their appearance fool you. Uh, they are very, very good as far as wrestling as a whole. Uh, but they also are very good at shenanigans. Uh, as long as you don't let the shenanigans distract you, uh, you have a, a a chance. But if you, they are very good wrestlers. They are very good entertainers, and they they can they can pull off an upset with these guys. And then we got one more. Sorry, match. I was looking at my volume eighty seven, folks. I just want to point out something in the volume eighty seven. Oh man, it's not gonna work. It. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll fix it's it in the post. It's a young PX. He's beautiful. All right, man. Yeah, seven. I had I had hair then. Remember? Let me change my background. I'm I'm very uh, excited for this match. I'm hopeful for this match because I'm tired of the the bullshit. 
I, I got to preface all this, and I'm going to try not to go on a gabagool rant here, but I'm tired of the bullshit of the undeniable. They, they've run amok in this company. We came out here in 2020 during a, a, a rain sleet storm, me, PX, and Mikey Chicken Tenders. We took a ride out, and we were there to see this company. And that was kind of before the infection of the undeniable. It was. And, and COVID, dude. It was right before that infection as well. Get your booster if you believe in it. Now, listen, here's the thing, guys. All our hopes are right here in the balance of my childhood hero. And he's a beautiful man. He's great. He's powerful. He's humble. And guess what? He's going to humble this big, simply undeniable bastard. My pick, unequivocally, undeniably, is Mr. Rion Skills. I can't wait to see you work. It, it's a shame that it took this long for you to have this opportunity, but man, we're all counting on you, and I can't wait to cheer you on. And and you better believe, Rion, I'm going to get everybody at Joliet to do the wave finally. I went on Windy City Slam, and I critiqued them. I said, it's just like the ocean, okay? I'm going to work with them. We're going to get the wave going. You're going to have all of our support, and I wish you luck, sir. Smiley, what do you think about this? Well, before you do say some words, I just want to provide some context to our listeners about how this match exactly came about. I talked a little bit earlier about the match between Brooks Berna and Steve Michaels last month and how that ended up. Rion came in with the save. And at that point, once everything settled down a little bit, Nuke came out to make this match. It is the Nightmare on Elm Street fight. This is Rion's first, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Rion. This is your first one-on-one -on -one opportunity for the Rocket Pro Wrestling Championship. But you were also in the inaugural Rocket Rumble, which was also for the Rocket Pro Wrestling Championship. Am I correct on that? Yes, that is correct on both fronts. Uh, I was actually the final two. Uh, and as far as the uh, admit the inaugural uh, Rocket Rumble, uh, I lost to Just Amazing at that time. And then Just Amazing went on to fight both Mark Reconcile, uh, who ended up winning the championship, and Jeff Steeples, who ended up being the first ever uh, Outer Limits. Uh, yeah, our limits. Yep. So it's that. uh, and with the exception of this particular match that's coming up, this will be the first time uh, as a whole that I've I've wrestled. It'll be a, my first main event at Rocket Pro. I mean, I've main event in another spot, so this will be my first actual main event match at Rocket Pro Wrestling. Uh, my first one on one match. As far as uh, the actual uh, championship itself, as far as the big belt, so to speak. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what else you want me to say as far as the, the history lesson, but that's that's all that I have at this particular time. And I mean, you're a decorated champion in your own right, former Intercounty champion. Um, this would not be your first shot at a major title as you were the PCW heavyweight champion back in the day. Um, and I'm sure there are other titles that I'm missing. Um, so you're very familiar with winning gold in professional wrestling. Well, I, I have, I mean, if you want me to start rapid fire and all of that stuff, I can, Go for it. but the, oh, well, okay. Uh, IUWA, I was the light heavyweight champion. I was their cruiserweight champion on two separate occasions. Uh, tag champion for IUWA. Uh, I was also their television champion for uh, IUWA. Uh, Pro Championship Wrestling, I was the, the heavyweight champion, as you already uh, described. I was the Midwest champion on two separate occasions there. Uh, two-time uh, tag team champion. Uh, and I was also a two-time winner of the Quest for the Cup uh, tournament. Uh, 
which at well at the time because they're, they're not running anymore but i was the only one in the history of that company to win that tournament twice uh is <laughs> the as, as far as uh like what is uh cwa uh I was their internet champion on four separate occasions, uh, second city champion on one occasion, and their heavyweight champion on on one occasion. Um, I I've held championships, but it's but all of that, and and I'll I'll just flat out say it was pre pandemic. So I haven't held a championship or gone after. A major championship, I should say. Short of the Rocket Pro, like there's like as far as heavyweight titles, uh, I have not. I haven't challenged for one. Uh, I was lucky enough to be able to challenge for the Inner County, and I am still grateful for that opportunity because it it surely could have went either way. Uh, but this this is something. This is a completely different beast. I'm I'm not even sure how to to go about it as far as uh, the championship aspect of things because it's it's been a minute. But I know you're going to ask people as far as their like who they're going to pick in this match. So I'm I'm curious to see how they play out. Go ahead, Smiley. I'll start with you. Oh, you got to raise the corn first. Okay, go for it. I mean, is there anybody else that I would choose? Rian is, without a doubt, the person I'm choosing in this match. What more can I say? Thomas? Well, you know, I got so excited at the start. You already know what I'm thinking. And uh, I got to say, not much has changed. That yeah, I'm uh, confident about Boy, Rion, he's got this. Come on, hundred percent. Now let's hear from the mask. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Final answer. Lock in. Lock it, it in. You just lock it in. Now, the one thing that I think will be an X factor in this match is the undeniable. They always have. Plan B through Z, all planned out. Mm -hmm. Calculating, they're cunning. They have a lot of tricks up their sleeves. Mm -hmm. The message that I saw today from Maximus Orion gives me a little bit of concern. Sure, it gives me a little bit of concern. I will tell you this. If Maximus interferes in this match... And, t- and goes against my childhood hero. I jumped that fucking guardrail. I will oh, do Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nope, nope. LIM is not endorsing jumping the guardrail. We have a, a strict agreement with Chuck Gunderson that we cannot get involved. Fine, fine, anything. fine. I'll, I'll I mean, wait for that. Remember. I'll wait for that motherfucker to come on Fortnite and we'll go 1v1 in fucking whatever town they call him. And he can build while I blast, okay? And I'm going to just start blasting. You don't fuck with Rion's skills, Maximus Orion. So take it easy, pal. Whew. All this to say why yeah. I asked Rion about his various titles he's won over the years. As you can see that this man is clutch when the lights are brightest. And there is a lot of different variables that can come into play in this match, obviously. But if I can trust any wrestler in the Rocket Pro locker room to take down the Undeniable, and I must say, too, Steve Michaels has been a very, very strong fighting champion. But Rion is the real deal. He fucking is. And we acknowledge Rion. Absolutely. And he is my pick to win this match. I'm not saying saying this just to blow smoke, but Rion, I just... 
I hope you take this as a compliment and not just cause you're here, but you know, like I, I've been a fan of wrestling for like uh, close, you know, 20 years or maybe plus, 20 plus years. And w when I got into it, I was a big John Cena guy. And I know people would critique that at the time, but like that was my guy. And, and, and then I lost touch with wrestling. But when I, when I came to rocket pro wrestling, in, in in 2020 and we watched that those those matches that was at resolution and we saw you wrestle I, I didn't know much about you but from the minute i saw you i was like holy shit you sparked my love of professional and wrestling again and even when you went through all your stuff with maximus last season and in the part of the season prior you know i'm always going to be in your corner man you you ignited my passion for wrestling again and I'm always going to be in your corner, man. I love you. You're the shit. I totally appreciate you being on here, and I'm going to lose my voice screaming for you on October 5th. And because I didn't get a chance to say this on um, Power Hour, and since we have Rion here, um, when oh. we did the birthday special for Rion, before oh. it was kind of weirdly cut off, um, the one thing that I wanted to say about Rion, um, and this is Pat talking, this isn't PX, this is Pat. Um, uh -oh. So the one thing that I will say about Rion is he genuinely cares. He does. He, I, I can remember I was dealing with some stuff last summer and I, I didn't tell Rion what exactly it was, but anytime he saw me, he always checked to make sure I was doing okay. That's the kind of guy Rion is. And then a little bit after that is when he had invited me to be a part of the power hour. And, you know, I know I stepped away recently to try to handle some personal issues and take care of all of that stuff. Um, you know, I am very, very blessed with that opportunity to have been on that show. Um, definitely would love to come back at some point should situation change um so i just want rion to know that I'm, I'm very very grateful for him and i'm very grateful for his friendship and um i am rooting for you very very hard to win this match against steve michaels he's got a heart just a a, a heart of uh what's this what's the phrase i'm looking for heart of gold heart of gold and a fistful of steel kick some fucking ass my friend yeah Smiley, you got some words for the real deal Rian skills? Um, I haven't really known him that long. I've only been around Rocket Pro for I think we're coming up on my two on two years, something like that. Um and I appreciate the friendship as well. Um he is also like you said, Pat, he's a guy that genuinely cares. And I always enjoy the conversations we have at Rocket Pro. Thomas, we got to get you to try some Dutch babies at some point. Dude, you will love the Dutch babies. How did you just say? No, no, no. So it's like a German pancake. It's not as grotesque okay. as it sounds. It's fantastic. I'll look for a photo. Give me one second. Um, but before I do that, uh, I'm going to say thank you for the kind word. But at the same time, I am going to ask you, and this this is as as humble as I could possibly be. Please don't underestimate Steve Michaels. I am very good at what I do, but I also recognize what type of force he is. I've seen him in IPW. I've seen him take this championship and go to different states across the country and come back with it. I I know I'm not going to underestimate him. I'm going to do my best to make sure that everyone leaves home happy or leaves that place happy. But please don't underestimate him. I am all for the Rion Skills Love Fest, but do not underestimate that man. I am going to look for this 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 Dutch baby thing now. I just wanted to make sure that everyone is on the same page because I don't want to have another conversation with you guys. Like, what happened? Like, win or lose, do not underestimate. 
I'm not even talking about the undeniable. Just him. Just him as a whole. He is he is six five, three sixty. Do not underestimate that man. I've been a lot of big matches, and this is this is pretty big. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the Dutch baby thing. Up to, give me a second. Sorry about that. I'm gonna mute you guys. Thomas, you're gonna love this. This yeah. is big. This is literally big. Literally. And I mean, yeah, we I agree with hey, Rian. We shouldn't necessarily big. underestimate Steve Michaels. We've seen what he's been able to do against the likes of uh, Lennox Leon and Darius Luttrell and Gunnar Brave and Aaron Stone. Uh, the okay. guys that he's been, he's run roughshod all over the roster with or without the undeniable. Yeah. Oh, and that is a Dutch baby, sir. Powdered oh, sugar. Go, Thomas. I almost called you. Thomas, that picture doesn't do it justice how big this thing is. The plate, okay. I, I, like I just, the plate. You don't need to tell me that. I'm just trying to figure out where it starts and ends. I'm trying it, to figure out if, it it does it. or if it's like, this is it thing firm, is, right? The <laughs> circumference of this thing is longer than the Golden Gate Bridge, okay? And it's packed with flavor. Is it slices of bananas in there? Who is that? Put fruit in there. Yeah, you could totally put fruit in there. You could put apples. Uh, I believe that's a different kind of Dutch baby. I'm somewhat uncultured, but it's a, it's a form, right? It is a form. Okay. Mm. I've had one. I split it with baby LaGreca. I ate about. I split my bacon with baby LaGreca, and I didn't even realize it. Point of discussion. Poor PX was. <laughs> thinking about other things, top fan things, and uh, yeah. the Greco stole his bacon. That is true. He did take a bite of my bacon, and I had absolutely no idea that that happened. And for some reason, Gabagool kept saying, hey. Um, you want my sausage? You want my sausage? And I thought it was weird, and he was being a bit of a mouth breather. The top fan saying that, not oh. consigliere PX, just oh. to be clear. Uh, but at that point, that's where my mind was. Folks. But I would not take sausage. Let me be careful with how I'm phrasing this. I'll just say that it wasn't necessary and it was fine. Folks, if you want some Hobie mushrooms. Yes. If you want some action-packed entertainment. If you want movie. to see my childhood hero, it's a better picture here. My childhood hero go to war with this big SOB. October 5th, St. Joe's Park, Rocket Pro Wrestling, Darkness Falls. There's going to be a pre-show match, which we already covered. You're going to see seven matches in total. And a segment from one of our LIM brethren. It's the place to be. There's no other place on October 5th where you're going to get this kind of entertainment, this kind of wrestling. I don't care which side of town you're on. This is the side of town you want to be on. Anything else you want to add to that, PX? Yes, there is. Um, Pre-show starts at 4.30. Stores open at 4. Tickets are $20 for general admission, $25 for front row. Be there or be square. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything, because I feel like I am forgetting a thing about this particular thing. Nope, I have oh, yeah, the things. Uh, just so you know, I'm going to have to do it again. Uh, I now have to be ready for uh, some choreography and fight wrestling for the Chicago Nights. We appreciate you. We All appreciate right. your time. We appreciate you coming on, Rian. <laughs> Thank you so much, and good luck on October 5th. Okay. See you, bro. Brother. Oh, yeah. Brother. All right, gentlemen, as we are wrapping up, Gabagool. Uh, you have to wrap this show up. You're the new leader of the LIM. I can't do it anymore. You're the undisputed LIM beer drinking champion. And a bit of LIM news because we didn't cover much LIM news. Uh, I had an open challenge at the last show. I came out with the belts. The open challenge was kind of all over the place because LIM was scattered. 
we were here, we were there, we were everywhere. We're in so demand. <laughs> when you win six Nova Awards in a span of two years, of course we're in demand. There was an exhibition bout between a of a debuting LIM member in uh, Thomas Foolery. He put up a hell of a fight. Now I do want to throw out there that with with the Gabagool regime, we're allowing any kind of cups. Now it has to be alcohol. But oh. we did have a truly battle. A part of a part of our exhibition bout at the last show. Uh, trulys were involved and and I'm putting this out there publicly so there's no confusion down the road when other people resurface in the LIM any cup with alcohol counts towards your your tower okay because I gotta switch from the beer PX I mean I just had a few here on this but I gotta watch my figure we're going into a new year it's an odd year it's 2025 I gotta be looking sharp I might have to drink a couple of Trulies here and there. Maybe like a vodka club soda. I'm watching my calories. Can you knock me for it? All right, folks. October 5th. Well, you know what? There's actually one more thing I want to talk about because I don't think we've talked about it as a group. Did you guys notice end of the movie? What happened with Danny? Damien Saint. I did, but I don't think there's much we can do about it because it's Damien Saint. But I, mm. I, I know he's your brother. I know I used to give him drum lessons, and I, I, despite everything that happened, there is a place in my heart for Danny always, as with everybody in LIM. But uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how to go about this. I mean, it's just we we haven't heard. I haven't heard much from him. Um... You know, it's it's just a. Um, I mean, that caught me very, very off guard. You, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I think we'll pull around. I think what it's probably just an instance of recovery. I mean, he went from getting hit repeatedly in his mandibles to losing a drinking contest to getting demolished in a contest to getting demolished after the contest. I think he just needs recuperation. You know? I think I think he'll be give him some that. I'm sure it'd be good. I don't know what we could uh do about Mr. Saint. It's uh it's a force right there, so I mean I Smiley, I don't know, man. Like I mean he turned you into a coat rack, he choked out my brother, like how far is he will how far is Damien Saint willing to go? Not really sure. He's willing to go to all lengths, it appears. I mean, it's just I don't know. I hope Danny's okay. I'm sure you'll see as well. him at some kind of uh, uh you know, there's a lot of holidays coming. Yeah, I mean up. Thanksgiving. We usually celebrate Thanksgiving on Thursdays. I know that's more than a month away, but you keep us in the loop. There's oh, always a seat at the table for Danny. He just needs to, uh, you know, watch it with the peace treaty that I gave him, but that's neither here nor there. Steve Aaron, how you doing, buddy? But, uh, PX, once we take care of some other business, we'll address that business. How's that sound? Can I make that, can I make that proclamation to you, that proposition, actually? Yeah, I guess. I mean, you know that. There's... I mean, we got to address this Maximus thing. Yes, we got to see take care what's going on with Maximus. We can only fight one battle at a time, and I do have a plan. And I will say, Maximus Orion, you do not want to be on this side of the law. All right, because I've been to the Chamber of Secrets, I've been to the mountaintop, and you. Do not mess with the LIM. With that being said, folks, I think it's time we close the tab on this episode. I think so. It, I think we got to get some uh, food in this tummy because this engine doesn't run on steam. You know what I'm saying? I think about it. Think, think about, about it. it. Think about it. Think about it. We're going to leave. Thinking about that? We're thinking about, that? We're thinking about it. How are you now? Oh, how are you now? Oh, not so bad now. How about your health? <laughs> 
Oh my god, oh, oh, my god. Dingo, dingo, rock pro wrestling man on oh, October 5th, man. Max Missile Ryan, man. Max, uh, blah, blah, blah. October 5th. Like I said, I can't say it enough. October 5th. Be there. This is going to be an entertaining show. There's going to be wrestling nonstop. We got seven matches, a pre-show match, Hobie Mushrooms, LIM shenanigans in the crowd. Three dollar beers and three dollar beers. Seltzers. And seltzers, which can now be put towards the match for this. It's an open a challenge. Little of, a little bit of entertainment to start off one of the top months, October time. You get all these matches, you get your front row seats, no other seats, you know, three dollar beers. You know, at St. Joe's Park, October fifth. Yeah, buddy. This is why we brought him in. He yes, and play. and speaking of this, um, Thomas, it's the nose. It's a uh, little there, and you know, keeps him focused. We got the Hobie mushrooms in October, so that means that Chet Gunderson will be making his return, which means oh. he's oh. gonna need some people, some lovely intoxicated men, if you will, to uh, make an entrance with him. Requested for you specifically. So you got to find somebody to join you. I mean, you've got a partner, is that correct? Well, you know, you know, it's, it's, let's just say there's some, there's some things in place, you know, maybe maybe some protocols or something, but we'll we'll see how she goes. Hey. We'll see how that plays out. I'm looking forward to it. The quote, the great Italian stallion, ain't nothing over till it's over. So I like to, let's wait. Whoa, whoa, gets... hold on. Your background again. About what? Your, oh, your, your background. What the? Well, he mentioned something about the, the protocol, the hope is gone protocol. Yeah, I, 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 I was at an interview once and the guy's like, uh, all right, everything looks good so far. We just need to check your background. And then he like he asked oh, me to move shit. on. He looks behind me, and he's like, "Yeah, background checks out." I, I can't. I don't know you guys is two camera get backgrounds back here. In, I can't get back in. All of a sudden, it just changed. Good thing it was like the end of the cast, eh? I'm good. I guess, I guess we should just go ahead and wrap we gotta, this up. We gotta, yeah, we're gonna close. We're gonna close the tab on this episode because we're having some technical difficulties. Will somebody get on the phone with Microsoft and the? I, I got you guys. And uh, I can't get back in. While you're at it, give Steve Jobs a call, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us, Rion Skills. Thank you for being a part of this episode. Take it easy. Goodbye, my friend.